If you send off your resume without knowing this in this video, you might as well lay it on fire because 75% of resumes are never read by a human because they don't make it past the automated application system. And even if you do get past the computer, only about 10% of submitted resumes get put in front of an actual hiring manager, aka the guy who decides if you get interviewed or not. This automatic denial is so frustrating it makes you want to quit because you're a hard worker from a solid school, right? And you've got some pretty good work experience and some pretty good grades. So why don't we even get a shot from these companies? Why do we never hear back? And what can we do to get our resumes past the wall of the applicant tracking system and in front of actual human eyes? What mistakes are most of us making that are ruining our chances of getting hired? We can't change our experience level, so how do we make our experience stand out among a crowded sea of applicants? Recently, I've had two friends with very different work experience struggling to find jobs, but after I helped them apply with these principles, they both found their jobs really, really quickly. So I hope I can help you do the same. But to begin, we need to understand the applicant tracking system. In the mid-2000s, some smart guys thought, wait a second, what if instead of paying a bunch of humans to sift through and throw out resumes, we get a computer to do it? And thus, the idea of the ATS was born. Essentially, companies use ATS software to speed up, reduce costs, and streamline the hiring process. There are many different versions, but they all mostly do the same thing with similar parameters. When you apply for a job, the ATS scans your resume for specific keywords, skills, and qualifications that match the job description that you're applying to. If your resume doesn't include these keywords, it will automatically get filtered out before a recruiter even sees it. This means that your excellent application could be rejected on a technicality by an algorithm, not an actual person. So how do we get past the gatekeeper that is the ATS? Well, despite what lots of people online will tell you, you don't have to pay for their special app or service to do it. Sure, that can make it easier, but there are a bunch of things that you can do for free to increase the likelihood that you won't get weeded out. Before we talk about this though, I need to preface that it will require that you change your perspective on the job application process, or at least it made me change my perspective. It's kind of like dating. You can't marry 10 people at once, just like you can't have 10 jobs at once. You need one very good job and you need one very good partner. So yes, we want to apply to a high quantity of jobs, but if when you click submit, you're just lighting a resume on fire, what's even the point? A lot of these recommendations might take a bit longer, but the results will be far better. The first thing we need to start doing is customizing our resumes for each job we apply to. Now, if you're anything like me, when you heard this for the first time, you rolled your eyes and you're like, that's realistically impossible. It would take way too long to edit the resume for every job posting. 10 applications would go from a two hour commitment to a four hour ordeal. But if we don't customize, we might as well light the resume on fire. And luckily with the use of AI, we can actually make this customization process way faster. Each job listing has a job description. When you're looking at applying for a job, read through the job description and write down specific words that you think could be keywords for an ATS system. AI can really expedite this process because you can copy paste the job description into ChatGPT and it'll spit out a list of keywords, which you can then select from there. So for example, this is a financial operations analyst opening and here's a bunch of keywords that ChatGPT gave me from the description. If your resume doesn't clearly state that you have experience with databases, SQL, Excel, and the like, or if you don't make it clear that you have at least four years of experience, the system will weed you out. So you need to make it obvious to the system that you have the attributes, aka the keywords that it's asking for. This can be as simple as changing how you describe a previous role. So for example, rather than saying implemented VBA programming to consolidate all processing materials into one document, you could say implemented VBA programming in Excel to consolidate all processing materials into one document. Now this is a relatively small change, but if you do this for a couple of times as keywords it's been looking for, it could be the difference between getting pruned and not. The second way we get filtered out by the ATS is simply because of formatting. You could have the exact same qualifications on your resume as another person, but simply because of formatting differences, you could get rejected by the applicant tracking system while they're gonna get an interview. So how do we make your resume easy to read in the eyes of these ATS sentinels? Well, there are some basics and then there are some more advanced strategies and we'll talk about both. The basics are you should use a simple layout with no pictures. Use a simple font like Times New Roman, use simple bullet points, so basic circles and squares, so no crazy shapes or anything like that. Submit it as a PDF, not a .doc, aka not a Word document, and make sure each section like work experience, skills, and education are really clearly labeled. For leveling up with some more advanced strategies, many third-party websites like JobScan or Novo Resume offer resume templates that you can use 
or where you can give the job description and your resume, and it will tell you if there are formatting or keyword compatibility issues that you can then change before you apply. So what does an excellent, simple resume look like? Well, here are some more colorful examples, but I personally think it's best to keep it as simple as humanly possible. If you're coming right out of school, it's usually best policy to put education, then work experience, then community service slash skills. But if you've been working for four to five years, at least according to the Harvard Business Review, you should put your work experience before you put your education. If you spent hours crafting your resume to amazingly show how you increased monthly revenue by 32% in your last job while managing a diverse team and also leading the company's service projects each month, the last thing you want is your credibility to fly out the window because of typos, whether it be a misspelled word, a random posture somewhere, or forgetting to capitalize something. So how do we avoid these frankly silly mistakes? Well, the first step is to make sure you read your resume out loud slowly before exporting it to a PDF to submit it. Reading it out loud will help you naturally catch the issue that your brain would have skipped over if you had just read it in your mind. Also, this may be a bit uncomfortable, but asking a friend or a family member who hasn't been staring at the same document for hours to read through it can be really helpful in spotting accidental errors. If you don't have friends or family available, downloading an extension like Grammarly can be really helpful. Grammarly isn't perfect, but it's pretty dang good at catching spelling and other punctuation errors. In order to make your resume really stand out, you need to show, not tell. Don't tell them that you were a self-starter or that you're good at cutting costs. Instead, show them by saying something like, launched a company-wide sustainability initiative that cut operational costs by 20%, or volunteered to lead onboarding for a summer intern program of 15 interns. These examples prove, for lack of a better word, that you are a self-starter and that you're really good at cutting costs. Along this same line, your resume will be much more potent if you use numbers to show, not tell your impact. So for example, the difference between saying filmed, edited, and posted videos for peak nights and saying filmed, edited, and posted 600 videos for peak nights amassing 100 million views gives the reader an idea of how much work, responsibility, or impact you actually had. Likewise, if you said you managed a large group of teachers and taught them better lesson planning, it doesn't have the impact of managed 30 teachers and increased the positivity of student teacher feedback by 20%. Using numbers strengthens your resume in the eyes of hiring managers because it shows quantifiable achievements. According to Forbes, 34% of hiring managers say a lack of any quantifiable achievements is a huge deal breaker. If you really want to stand out to a hiring manager, don't just say you manage a team of five people. Everybody you're competing with for that interview spot will have managed people or done something similar. So you have to dig deeper. What can you say about those five people that you managed? Did they exceed their sales goals? Did they get promoted or even give you top reviews? Anything that you can point out that helps prove that you're a good manager will put you above and beyond the rest because ultimately, everybody's gonna say that they're a good manager. No one's gonna be like, oh yeah, I actually kinda suck at leading. So to stand out from the crowd, you need to prove it and the best way to prove it is with numbers. Now, I would love to hear from all of you if you have any advice on how to make a killer resume. If you do, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.